Hi, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Mishlei. This is class of the date, January 19, 2016. We took a vote, um, and we are going to do words, as the Pusik says, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the words of understanding. Um, really, it's called words of understanding, and in Hebrew, it's imre bina. Um, my premise is I think we can break it up into imre, words, and then combine it with words of understanding. I'm not even sure we know what bina means, understanding. So I want to I wanna separate these this the end of the verse into words and then understanding and then words of understanding, okay? That's what I want to do. Uh, I don't know how many weeks it's going to take, but when we finish and then we're going to go to the English, we're going to have finished the first two verses, and I think we can all agree that – when that happens, we're going to be in a very good position to understand the entire book of Proverbs. Give me a one or two. All right. Brandon, catch up with Pam. You'll, you, there's a lot of work you missed. We've, 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 we've hashed out a lot of material, I, and I urge you to contact Pam uh, for the previous material. Okay? Give me one or two. Okay. Um, and as for the where we continued from last week, we discussed that off cam, off camera or whatever, right? Um, please listen to the end of last week's class to refresh your memory of where we're starting with today. Um, I don't need to redo it for the recording here. So if you come to class live, you'll get that opportunity live. Otherwise, please listen to the last five, ten minutes of last week before listening to this week's class. Okay. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. Where are we with words, Imre? Um, we understood lehavin. We understand lehavin is to discern, and we understand what discern is. Um, how do you guys feel right now? Do you feel uh, a little bit uncomfortable? What making you feel good and un- good and uncomfortable? I'm not. I'm not interested in, in how you how you feel. I'm asking. Do you feel confident with the material right now? The answer should be no, because I'm making it unpleasant on purpose. <laughs> Meaning, I'm embracing the fog. <laughs> Remember, there's a lot of fog here, and I, I I'm deliberately doing it because we have to embrace the fog. Otherwise, we cannot discern and get through the fog. So my my I'm just kind of thinking out loud. What, what, what is my job as is, is the instructor of the class right now? My job is to say you all thought you were smart and that you know what words are, and I'm trying my very best to make sure that I ruin everything you ever thought you knew about the word words, one or two. It's why it's a long introduction. I'm rambling on. I'm not discerning. You see how I'm intentionally not discerning. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm doing it premeditatedly. I'm just becoming aware of my lack of moron man. <laughs> I think that's the goal of the class is to pay attention to what we do. Um, here's a little thought I just thought. Um, Brian and I are on a business meeting, one or two. And I say, hey, Brian, how's it going? Hey, Rabbi Katz, how's it going? And we're talking, right? Brian and I are talking at the business meeting. What And can you imagine that I'm doing to Brian in the business meeting what I'm doing with you now? You're like, hey, Brian, what are you going to order? Oh, I don't know, Rabbi Katz, what do you want to order? Oh, you know, Brian, I always come here, and the menu is always big and thick, and huh, I can never seem to get through this menu. And, uh, wow, look at that. They seem to have changed the menu from last time. I wonder, wonder why that is. You know, I'm friends with the guy that used to work here four years ago. I'm thinking about, let me just call him on my cell phone real quick and find out why they changed the menu. What am I doing to Brian? But why? Why am I, why? 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 Why, 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 why? I'm making fog for Brian for whatever reason. Whatever reason. I'm he no, I, that's your opinion, and I don't really care about your opinion. All Brian needs to know is this guy's making fog for me, and I don't know why I need to discern. You see, don't make judgments against me. You are not smart enough to know. You have to be psychic or whatever, a prophet, and you're not. 
right? I might just be tired. I might be bored. I might just not like Brian. I don't know. Brian can't know. As they say in Texas, you can't know, right? So the more Brian thinks he knows, then he's making fog for me. Because what's Brian going to do? He's going to feed into this garbage. Oh, yeah, Rabbi Kerr, the menu is pretty thick. You know, once upon a time when I was in elementary school, I, th- I saw a thick menu too, and I thought, hey, that's pretty crazy. It's a thick menu. Now what is this? Those two guys talking bull session like most people do and it doesn't go anywhere. One or two. Now both guys are stuck in the mud. Now it's an ego contest. Like, oh, I got through a, a thick menu when I was five. I was in a contest in the local school, and I got through the whole menu. I got it. Oh, well, well my, my brother-in-law prints really, really, really big menus. What is that? You see, now, now we dug a little, a little ego macho pit that we're both in. And now it's going to be a contest of who's going to get out of it. God's going to bring the mazzle in, and the waitress is going to come. She's probably very attractive. She's going to say, oh, wow, look how big the menus are. And they're going to go, ha, ha, we were just talking about that. You see what I'm saying here? Look how foggy the entire thing is going to become. Because you, you, you give in to the, the, judgment, the judgments and ego and bias. And what's this, what's this an analogy of? Moron man. You see how God engineers moron man? It's fog, but no one's even embracing the fog. You don't even know it's foggy. You're just a moron. Two morons talking to a moron waitress about how big the menus are. You see? Now you better be praying for a miracle that God's going to send the wake-up call. Some people don't get the miracle. Some people don't get Morpheus sending the Nokia telephone, one or two. Then you're, then it's just, what are you doing? You're lost. Whole day's lost. You're spacing out and the guy's talking about the menu and you're, it's just, I mean, come on, you know where this goes. You know where this goes. The point is, when the fog sets in, that's your sign. That's Morpheus. Wake up. Right? Don't give in to more on me. Wake up. Start discerning. Solomon says, pay attention to who you're sitting across from. I'm sitting across from a guy who talks about how big the menu is. Why? Why? Pay attention. Start discerning. See what I'm saying? All right. So that's what we're, we were doing here, the beginning of class today. We had, to, we had to create the fog. Let there be fog. Don't say the Torah begins with let there be light. Let there be fog. Because how does the light come through? It comes through the fog. Um, it's just kind of like getting, cutting to the chase, right? Instead of me saying, hi, everybody, welcome to another edition of Mishle. I'm Rabbi David Katz. I'll be your host for this evening. If you remember, there's no fog there. I mean, not, not, not a natural fog. I'm just kind of giving a, an automated response. It's like a robot. You follow me? But if we're going to get real and live and up front, let's go ahead and, and, and cut to the chase and just say, look, we're blotting out the word words. You don't know what it means. I'm going to give an introduction for about 10 minutes to make sure I wipe your memories clean. Like a sci-fi movie, right? By now, you all should be numb as could be on what the word words means, one or two. You have no idea where I'm going to go. You have no idea what's going to happen. You, 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 as they say in Texas, you can't know. Does anybody have any idea what's going to happen in two minutes from now from this point on? Where we're going to go with words? You, you can't know. No one, you can't know. I don't know. I've ruined it. I've ruined the whole thing. That's the brilliance of it. That's the brilliance of it. Because if you understand and trust the process of how wisdom works, right, you know what discerning means, correct? There's fog, and therefore, now, if you're going to survive and you're going to stay in this class tonight, you have to discern your way through this class. That's it. If you're going to make it to the end of class tonight, you're not going to get there unless you discern your way through. Because I've ruined the path. If there ever was a path, it is ruined. And if you trust God, the path will become revealed before your eyes. 
Ready to start? Let's find out what the path holds. It's nice, isn't it? It's kind of a reality check. It's a reality check. It's, it's a way of just getting to the MS, getting to the wisdom, and finding out what God has in mind without having to shed through layers of clipper. Right? Okay, here we go. So now it's a good question, really. By definition, we're saying that words of understanding are onomatopoeia words, one or two. This is my hakdama or introduction from, from what I know, right? Words of understanding are words that are, again, we're going to challenge this. This is not, this is not uh, set in stone here. Um, so without me ruining it further, let's go ahead and find out what words are. All right, we're in verse 2. I'm going to start with the Aramaic. So give me a second to find out our tools. Go ahead and uh, if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves while I'm playing around here, all right, um, do what you need to do. Uh, let me just check the sources and I'm going to come back. I'll leave the microphone on. Nothing's getting turned off, but I'm going to do my thing. So if you guys want to discuss, go ahead. Uh, it might be 10 seconds. It might be a minute. Let's see. Das Kochman Musser. Lahavin Imerbina. So the Aramaic says, Lameda, which is to know, Chokhmasa is wisdom, Umardusa is to, that's the Musr, right? to know, Chokhmasa, Mardusa, La Asboyan. You guys remember what La Asboyan means? Language of Bina to understand, but as whoever said it before, uh, Pierre Rogers, splitting hairs, particularly in the Aramaic, it means that. So to know wisdom, um, and Musser, Le is buoyant. Okay, now now we're in. Did it? I just want to get a quick question. Did any of you guys feel what just happened? Just this is just a, a question. Did you feel the energy shift? There was an energy shift just now. Can anybody tell me what the energy shift was? I want you to meditate on it. Keep going, Space Coast. What does that mean? You're good. You're one step away. One step away. You know, you should know from your wisdom what that means. Brian, you got to know this because I know you know it. C- get clear. I'm, on the, I'm, I'm fighting with you in the gym, Okay. You, you, you step to the ring with me. You're on the mat, right? We're sparring on the mat, one or two. Okay? What does it mean that you steady embrace the fog? What does it mean? Fight me. I want you to describe to me in the fight, what does that mean? Exactly. Now, now it's a real fight, isn't it? Now, we, now we're going to tango, aren't we? There's no more guesswork. There's no more guesswork. It's right. You feel the motion. You know if I'm a hard hitter. You know if I'm slick. You know if I'm going to roll, right? The the surprise element's gone. This is called getting inside. Say that to yourselves in in your own spaces right now. Getting inside. Know it. Say it. Know it. One or two. Now, I'll ask you again, can you feel my energy shift? Can you guys understand how my energy changed? I'm inside. I am inside. I am so locked on to this, it's over. I don't see through it yet. I'm not trying to. Brian didn't win the match. You never win the match in the first period. All I know know is I am going to finish this path by the end of class today. There's no doubt. I've locked in. It's over. Can you sense the confidence shift? Can you sense where I took the class? Now we're starting to discern. Do you feel it? This is what you need to take into your wisdom in the world, right? This is crucial, crucial. Embrace the fog, and when it hits the top of your head, you just put the pedal to the metal. You understand? You trust it. When it clicks, you just go. You don't look back. You don't question it. You just go. 
Now I'm going to tell you what did it for me. You ready to find out what, what set me off? I'm playing around in the fog. Ladas Chachma Musar. Okay, I know it's Hebrew. So to know wisdom and instruction. I'm meditating on it. I told you guys go away. That I'm going to do my own little thing. Correct? I told you go away. I'm going to do my thing. When I My thing that I was doing was, you heard me probably three or four times just repeat the mantra over and over again. To know wisdom and instruction. Correct? You heard me mumbling it to myself. To know wisdom and instruction. And I oscillated between the Aramaic and the Hebrew. All right? That's how you, that's how you meditate, wake yourself up. So I switched primarily to the Aramaic. Lameda chukwansa umardusa. I heard it. Now think about the mazel there. I heard it. What did I hear? What did I hear? It wasn't me. No, I didn't hear words. I heard it. No, I heard it. I T it. You hear what I'm saying? I heard it, 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 it. Don't ask me what it is. You cannot articulate the word it, can you? It's words of understanding. You got this? There's no artic. It's exactly hop. It's a shot. It's spark. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. This is why you can't prove gear. Tell me what gear is. I don't know. It's a spark that went off my head. I'm going to tell you how the spark went off my head. <laughs> That's why it's hard to tell people what gear is. It just, it hit it in my head. You know, God yelled it. How many of you guys have ever had that experience? Probably all the time, every day, right? Whatever, whatever, how it works with your brain and your own language and your own world. When you when 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 in your brain you hear an, an an inaudible it, that's when you got through the fog. One or two. Can you relate to this experience? You don't have to be able to articulate it, okay? And you're not gonna be able to articulate it. The point is it was foggy, difficult, uncomfortable, bothersome, and then you gave it a chance. You embraced it and gave it a chance. And then it, exactly, let there be light. Now, I'm going to tell you what it was for me. My job of teaching in Mishle is to tell you in tangible terms what it means. Don't you want to know what words of understanding are? You want to know what it means? Okay. So I'm reading the the Aramaic. Lameida chokmasa amardusa. Those are non-words. To know wisdom and instruction. Those are non-words. Again, that's that's Bob talking about the thick menu. I'm not interested about it. Maybe later I will be. Okay? It's not my, my job to judge or pass judgment or give opinion. I don't know. Because I'm embracing the fog. Therefore, I just don't know. Yeah, John, uh, tar- uh, Pam, can you send John the class when it's ready, please, afterwards? Give me one or two, please. Uh, uh, yeah, shkayach. We made the chokmasa mardusa lesboyim. Ah, see in Hebrew, you have the letter lamid before the word, which is the gerund. Remember, our word is lehavin. One or two lehavin. And for those of you that know Hebrew or don't know Hebrew, the Lamed is two, T-O. Havin, let's just call it to understand, okay? Or, uh, or no, sorry, understand. So the Lamed is to understand. Split hair, two split hairs. You follow me? Here it comes. Third step. Here it is. Don't lose out on me. Don't go foggy because now's where it hits. To know wisdom and instruction to split hairs or to understand words of understanding. You study and you, and you get through the fog in order to split hairs of words of understanding. Do you cop that? Do you understand it? 
So it's kind of, there's so many directions this is going. I thought I was supposed to learn wisdom. I thought I was supposed to know. I thought I was supposed to grow. I thought, I thought, I thought. That's you. I could care less about you. You should care less about you. It's about God. The point is, when I'm when me and Brian are going on our business lunch, am I sitting there saying, I know so much wisdom in my brain? Is that what's going on in my brain? I'm meditating on I know wisdom, I know is no. It's the last thing on my mind. Right? On on on, on tournament day, you're not sitting there telling yourself how much you know. You're just being in the moment. But the reason why you studied in the first place was so that when me and Brian go on our lunch date, I am ready to understand. You follow? Just that I'm able to. Not that I'm like a master of it or that I'm ready for Brian. I need to know in my heart that whatever happens between me and Brian and this business lunch deal thing, okay, that when the crucial moment comes, I am able to rise up to the challenge to understand Brian. That's really all that matters. Solomon says, know who you're sitting in front of. When the crucial moment comes, I need to be able to trust myself that I, exactly, that I can listen closely. That's all it comes down to. Are you, are you cultivated enough that you can be counted on to listen closely? One or two. Can you, Brian, Brian, can you buy me my favorite shampoo, please? If you don't know what the word favorite means, you're in trouble. Did you listen closely? And don't tell me how you're a linguist and you know what the word favorite means because we've already been down that road. You are a moron man. You don't know what favorite means. You need to listen closely to find out. You need to listen real close for the onomatopoeia that barely makes a peep. Right? Words of understanding. It's all in the inflection of the voice. <laughs> I use dove just for the for the for those wondering. Um, that's it. If you listen closely, that means you're saying, look, I'm not sure. You say you like all kinds of stuff. Which one in particular? Just to be sure. That means you were listening. Because if you didn't listen, you wouldn't have even known to ask. Now, let's find out the big news, right? So we, we now know what we're doing. We are studying in order he's buying Imre Binus biunta, biunta, biunta. Now I have a problem. I don't know what biunta is. Now, if you notice, the word for lehavin to split hairs is different than the word bina, biunta in the Aramaic. Anybody in the world that you ask, what does bina or understanding mean? They're all going to tell you understanding, without exception. To understand words of understanding, one or two. Everybody will look at this in their English art scroll and say to understand words of understanding or whatever, you know, derivative of that. But in the Aramaic, we're seeing it's different. We're seeing it's lahat lehid bayin, which we've looked up, right, to split hairs. Words, I don't know what words are, something with biunta. I think John wins in the end. You guys want to find out what biunta means? Let's find out what Biunta means. I'm going to step out for one second. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Do you see how people get it wrong, what Musser is? Do you understand 
that when people tell you Musser, which is like character refinement, right? They say like, Brian, you're nobody. You're nothing. You're supposed to realize that you blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, I'm really nothing. I'm really horrible. I'm really low. And they say, yeah, now you're getting it. No, that is wrong. That's not why you do Musser in that way, right? You do Musser because you have to embrace the fog, right? When you say, I know nothing, I really know nothing, it's not a humble thing to say. And it's not like, uh, you know nothing. Oh, I'm so great. I know nothing. What is it? It's wiping your memory, right? It's wiping your, anim- your, 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 your memory to be able to say, I probably think I know what words mean, but if I go into this with with a bias that I know, that's ego already, I'm going to miss the subtle point, right? So the more I embrace the muster, that generally people take it as a rude kind of condescending attitude. You have to flip it. it. It sounds rude and condescending, but you're doing it to wipe yourself clean so that you're prepared to learn the revelation. Exactly. You have to be able to be surprised. But people do it like, you know, I'm nobody. I beat myself up. I'm a, no. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like, um, it's the middle path, right? You got you to meet yourself halfway, okay? I don't know everything. But at the same time, you're letting yourself get to the point where you can know something. So do I know what words mean? No, I don't. I don't. But at the same time, I'm going to I'm confident I'm going to walk away knowing what words mean. So it's not even considering beating yourself up. It's telling the truth from a, from an ultra angle. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's a, it's a hardcore truth. Right? So it's not about beating yourself up. I just don't, on an ultra honest level, I really don't know what the word words mean. Okay. I never looked up the etymology. I never read the definition. I use it on a street level from Dayton, Ohio. I, I don't uh, want to claim that I am the linguist that knows what the word words mean. Right. I probably know in like yeah, you know, 80% success rate, I could probably pass a lot of tests. But am I going to hear the onomatopoeia with it? No, not even close. And how I use it is not how you use it. So what good is it if I know it? Because we're probably going to get in an argument. You don't use it right like me. I'm better than you. So w- w- either God gives you two options, okay? Me and Pam are going to talk about words. I'm going to say words, 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 Pam. And she's going to say Words, 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 Rabbi Katz. I'm going to say wrong, Pam. And she'll say wrong, Rabbi Katz. So now it's the whipping stick. Either I can beat myself up to be whipped, or I can take the muster and rebuke from somebody else. Why do you want it to come from somebody else? God is telling you, if you don't do it, I'm going to send someone to do it. That's what God is saying. It's like me and Reuven. Reuben, it's 8 o'clock. It's time to go to bed. No, uh, but one more show. No, I don't think you heard me correctly. The TV's going off at 8 o'clock. Either you're going to turn it off and go to bed, or I'm going to turn it off. Which one would you rather have? There's no choice here. You're going to school in the morning. You're waking up. TV's going off. So this is what God is saying. You're going to wipe your memory clean. Because guess what? If you don't, I'm going to send someone to argue with you or talk about thick menus, and you will forget what it is regardless. The fog will come. If I, if I get you guys to talk about menus for an hour, did you literally forget about Michele? Yeah. Because I took it away from your mind. I distracted you. It's called the Yid Sahara. Okay, I guarantee you I can sabotage the whole class right now. Let's talk about Powerball. You guys want to talk about Powerball? I, mean, I can sabotage the whole thing. Yeah, I bought a ticket. Even if you don't want to, I can still sabotage it. Right? But, you know, but God would win. You guys would just leave the class. <laughs> so in the end, God wins. You, you hear what I'm saying? So why go there? Why go there? Just be, just, you do the job. 
You do the job. You need to tell yourself the truth. I don't know. I don't know the level I should. I know that gear means convert. I really don't. Okay, honestly, I didn't look it up, and I don't know all the ins and outs that this gear group claims to have. I cannot make that claim, correct? I think it means convert, but I'm not sure. All right, you hear my point. This is what real Musser is, and I say the word Musser because that's our verse. And you hear people all the time, uh, you know, saying like, you know, the, this generation's nothing and we're low, and that's not real Musser. I'm sorry to tell you, okay? It's kind of like a McDonald's version of Musser. The wisdom version is, is the ultra truth. Get yourself strapped down so you're prepared to listen, one or two. Biunta. What is Biunta? I have no idea. No idea. First of all, you see it's a different setup in the structure of the word. Last time I checked, Biunta does not sound like Bina, one or two. How much you want to bet I found it? Any takers? Any takers? We found it. Biunta. Number one, it's not Bina. Does that surprise you guys? Number one, it's not Bina. Is that a surprise? Number two, I mean, it's literally not Bina. Like, Bina's not even in the options. It's a completely different animal. Completely different animal. Number two, the question is, what does it mean? Um, hold on a second. Very interesting. Yeah. So it's, you're going to like this. You're going to like this a lot. It's understanding in the gerund format. How do you like that? Is that, is that priceless? Is that priceless? Discerning to understanding. That's it. That says the whole story. That says the whole story. And the Aramaic uh, Targum Yonison, uh, he translates Bina as Biunta. And it's uh, Jaron is um, like a noun in the like uh, running to the store, Pam. I was late for class. Running is a gerund. Running to the store. I was late for class. To know wisdom and under to know wisdom and instruction, the isboyin imre biunta. Now listen to this. It's coming here. Listen to this. Please, I'm going away for a second. Mardusa. Is boyin imre biunta. Wow, that's heavy. Just 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 meditate on, on what I'm saying here. Ready? Really meditate on this and say it over in your head a lot of times. To know wisdom and instruction, to know words of understanding, or to know understanding words, to know, it's very hard to say it in English, these boyan imre biunta, words that bring me to understanding, that's how you'd say it, to know wisdom and instruction, to split hairs of words, that bring me to understanding, that bring that, that that deliver understanding, that come to understanding. You hear that? You hear that complex that, that complex nature of this? You're, you 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 develop wisdom and instruction. Lee's buy in to become empowered to break it down. Words 
that come with understanding, or words that come to understanding, or words that will become understood. You see all the different, that's where you take it. It's dynamic. So what he's saying is, is that the conversation is dynamic. This is how you learn. It's, it's, it's not static. It's dynamic. Let's see what we find here in the commentary. Let's see how people are talking about this. We are here. Uh, no. So Rashi's not talking. Let's see. Who's talking about this? Das. Das Chochma. Uh, das Chochma. I don't think anyone's even saying How could that be? No one talks about this. Here. The Malbim's on cue. Hold on. Malbim's with us. Would you believe there's only two people with us? The Aramaic and the Malbim. You guys want to know what the Malbim says? Ravin Imre Bina. Right? He's with us. He's saying he, he's with us. He's got our question. Do you understand how he's asking our question? One or two. If you were to learn a commentary, do you understand why the mall beam is the guy for this class? His, his bold print says Lahavin Imre Bina. Specifically. He is, he, is, he is addressing our issue. What does it mean? The, the icker, the main part to split words to come to understanding. You understand that? He is focusing on the thing. Everybody give me a one or two here. Though The point is that when you're setting out to learn, don't waste your time. Okay? You say, oh, I always read Rashi first. Rashi's not talking about it here. All right? You can already discern and discriminate against Rashi. One or two. And notice I use the word discriminate. Notice I use the word discriminate. Right? Rashi is not your friend right now. Do you see how you have to use Musser? Be rough. Beat him up. You understand what I'm doing here? You got to be tough. Because I'm going to say, well, a, a real Torah scholar always checks Rashi first. No, you don't. Not now and not here. You see how learning Torah gets a bit battle warlike? This is where you go to war. Don't tell me to look at Rashi. You have no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to go to the, the, the Aramaic. Oh, uh, 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 a non-Jew never looks at the Aramaic because without, a, without first looking at Rashi. Some stupid line like this. Is that true or false? I mean, is that good advice to be given like that? No. Okay, maybe as a rule of thumb, blah, blah, blah. We are not playing rule of thumb. We are not moron man, right? We are trying to get to the truth and understand words of understanding, right? And, and you size it up, discriminate, discern through the fog. And you look at it and you scan and you see, look, I only see two people talking about this. I see the, the Aramaic and I see the Mulbim. That's really all I'm interested in discussing. That's all that matters. If we're addressing our question today. Now, if I was addressing something else, then it'll be a different story. Right? You address what you need to address. You, you take the method of approach that you need. It's like tools in fixing stuff. Do you use a regular f- screwdriver for Phillips? No. Exactly. Let's go. Lavinim Rabina, Shiavin Amarim Hastumim Shelhabina, Lahavin Devar Metoch Devar. Now I will already tell you the Malbim has answered our question. Thank God. Let's now um, break it down for you. Shiavin. I'm not sure what Yavin means. Now I'm now I'm suspect on everything we do. We got to know what Yavin means. He's he's see what he's doing. He took our word the Havin, the split hairs, and he's he's breaking it down even more. He changed it to the word Yavin. You understand? 
We had Lehavin, he made it into Yavin. I don't know what Yavin means. You know what Yavin means? I don't know what Yavin means. Let's see. I think we want to look at... Um, that's a great question. What does Yavin mean? Let's look at Bain. Let's look at Bain. You know, you, do you understand why I'm splitting hairs to this degree in this class this week? Do you understand this? Because this is the crux of the whole matter. This is where everybody fogs out and they, 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 they disconnect, they go away, and they never found out what it meant. Every time. This is where the muscle, you have to have muscle. One second. I just found something else, even, maybe even better. One second. Biyunta. You won't believe what just happened. One second here. What happened here? Well, this is really good. I think that we just found that. Another, wait, this is even better. You're not going to believe this. B. Wait. Ah, uh, no. Hold on. No, my bad. Different spelling. Sorry about that. False alarm. I thought I found something different. We're all good. Ah, okay. Okay. One second. Let's overload here. Lose words. One second. This is good stuff. There it is. Okay, we're good. False alarm. Let's go. Um, Yavin. Yavin, Yavin, Yavin. Let's see. Yavin. Yavin. So there's bin, which is to teach or make wise. So Yavin is like it will happen in the future. Let's see if we can get an exact quote. By the way, he and he translates bean as intelligence or wisdom. Totally different ballgame. That's why it's important to split those hairs. Uh, let's see here. I want to find an exact source of Yavin. Let's look and see. The Yavin. Where's the Yavin? Uh, let's see here. Yavin. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. Let's break out the big guns. I'm going into the concordance. We're going to find out where in the Tanakh it says Yavin. You guys interested in that? There we go. So it's still got Bina. Here it is. There it is. Ready? Wow, this is a fun little research we're doing here. This is really good. Here we go. This is great. Okay, we have our work cut out because I'm telling you right now, the mall beam is the answer to our question. Okay? Uh, yes, Travis. The mall beam is the answer to our question. And the mall beam makes sense very clearly, except we don't know what Yavin means. Do you understand the problem here? 99% of the Malbim makes sense, and I can teach it to the moon. But I don't understand the entire crux of the Malbim because I don't know what Yavin means. Do you understand my dilemma? So those that were in class with me on Wednesday, last Wednesday, what if I were just some guy, what would I do? Pam Rogers, I'm talking to you. If I'm going to teach the Malbim and I'm not going to look it up, what am I going to do? I don't understand what Yavin means. I understand I can I can get by and I can explain most of it. What do I do? That's right. Kishuf. I'm gonna lie and make it up. I'm gonna lie and make it up. I'm not even gonna translate it. I'm gonna put the wool over your eyes, keep the fog, and you'll never know, and you'll never see it coming. What that, that is called? That is called art scroll. Okay, because there's a chiddish in the word Yavin. 
That, that's where the revelation is. Uh, therefore, if I lie and take it out, I'm removing the revelation. You understand? If I remove that revelation, you never got it. And you all sense the fog, and you walk away bothered, and you never really got it. You understand the problem? This is why it takes muscle. You got to go through this last little bit to get to the light, one or two. This is where you got to really get through the fog and stop discerning like a Christian. And I mean that to the Jewish people too. You don't tell yourself the answer because you don't know. You don't know. You let God reveal it at all cost. And people are going to say, come on, hurry up. I got to go. This is boring. He's going on and on and on and on. He's harping on on an old note. It doesn't matter. You do it right. Travis, Brian, um, take notes here. We're going to look up some verses. You ready? We have from 21 to 38. We got like 17 verses to pick from. A lot of them, if not uh, most of them, are in Mishle. Um, I'm going to pick out of 17 examples, we'll do three to four. Agreed? One or two. Write this down. Whoever, whoever's going to write this down for me, write it down. Isaiah 610. Give me affirmative when you have that written down. Isaiah 610. Give me affirmative. Hosea 414. Give me affirmative. We'll do David and Melech. Okay. David's a good guy. You guys like David? 92 7. 92 7 Psalms. We're going to do another Psalm. 94 7. Another Psalm. 94 7. Right now, Brandon, we're looking up verses. Hang tight. Now we're going to go to King Solomon. Mishle 14.15. This is a great one. Mishle 19.25. I know we already did it. We're going to do it again. because Now we know what it means. Mishle 19.25. And that should be one of the first ones we do. Let's get one more Solomon. Twenty nine seven Mishle. Twenty nine seven Mishle. Let's hang out with our friend Job. Job thirty six twenty nine. Job thirty six twenty nine. And Daniel eleven thirty seven. Daniel eleven thirty seven. Okay, we are going to do those verses, Um, maybe all of them today, hopefully, and I will promise you, when we finish those, write this down, Pam Rogers, we will finish the verse with the Malbim commentary on this, and then we will be done with the second verse. We will analyze the second verse one quick time. And then read the commentary, Vilna Gon, one or two. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, now, you're writing that we're going to finish with all these verses, and then we're going to plug it back into the Mulbim commentary, and that will conclude the second verse. Now, tell me the first, tell me whoever's going to tell me where we're starting. Where we go? Okay, 1925. 1925. We're in Proverbs 1925. Um, Write this down. Everybody write this down. 
Your mission is to write, is to understand this word. It all boils down to this. That's what it boils down to. Now, you should be embracing the fog right now. Embrace the fog, one or two. I don't know what it means. You don't know what it means. And it's a ridiculous statement that I'm telling you the entire thing boils down to a word that I don't know what it means. One or two. But it has to. Do you see why logically it has to be this? Do you understand why? If it's made sense till now, and look, I told you I know what the Malbim is. You didn't see it. But if we're going to take my word on the Malbim for the sake of argument, okay, the Malbim makes sense on every word but that. You understand that? We've already, and we'll see, when we go back to the Malbim, you'll see. You would have understood the entire thing. But by, by definition, we don't know what Yavin means. It's not found in a dictionary. Thus, it's found biblically. That's called Iker. Know this word. You must know this word. Iker. Iker. All right? When, when the husband is in trouble with the wife and she's going to yell at him, that's when she calls him sweetie. When she says sweetie, he knows what? He's in trouble. If it's, if it's honey, sugar, okay? When he's called sweetie, because that's their code, he's in trouble. One or two. All right? That's called an icker. He knows it's game on. I'm telling you, we, game on is the word yavin. Because it's, it's, it's not lehavin. It's not bina. Okay? It's a weird word. What does it mean? We went biblically. Thus, the, the entire uh, message is in this word Yavin. Why? It's an onomatopoeia, little dumb word, Yud. What's that you say? Uh, yud Beit Yud Nun. Nobody would focus on that word. Nobody. That's how you know to do it. You capiche? Brian, grab the microphone. Please read 1925 in Mishlei. Okay, 1925. <clears throat> Beat a scorner, and a simple man will gain understanding, or no, gain cunning, sorry. Reprove a man of understanding. Slow down. Okay. Go ahead. Reprove a man of understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He will understand knowledge. So he wants to say he will understand. Future, he will understand. You guys feel some good fog here? Feel some good fog? Why is it good fog? Why is it good fog? Because you can sense there's light coming, about to come through. It's not a perfect translation, but it, it, it tells me there's another course coming, doesn't it? We just got the gefilte the fish. And the chicken's ready to come, isn't it? You can sense it. It's juicy. It's ready. One or two. All right, here we go. The Aramaic. Nizboyan. Nizboyan. I want to look around and see who else we find here. See if anybody else is talking. All right, this is... This is uh, Tom Brady, game on the line. You follow me? This is the last drive of the game. There's 45 seconds on the clock. We got to go 60 yards, and um, we're going to go. We got to get, get, you got to get a touchdown. And Tom Brady's a quarterback. You follow my analogy there? Okay. Who wants to hear a stroke of genius? What's the most logical step we can do to find the answer? Anybody got the answer? The most logical step. Does anybody have a thought? <laughs> Travis got it. 
Cola Kavod to Travis. Everybody owes a Cola Kavod to Travis. Everybody should say Cola Kavod in their heart to Travis. Here we go. Yavin Das. Travis calls it. Ready? Yavin Das. Is the Malbim answering the question as we brought down in the previous verse? Is he on target? Is he on target? Now, we're going to be on Facebook. And we are arguing on a forum, aren't we? We're arguing. I, I am uh, going to argue Rashi is the greatest commentary ever. Can you imagine that? And someone's going to say, blah, blah, blah. And someone else says, I prefer the Malbim. Do you understand now what the Malbim is doing? You should all see very clearly what the Malbim's job is. You should see his soul. One or two. Do you understand now how the Malbim answers questions and what his soul is sent to do and what his function is and why he's not Rashi and why he's not all the others? I'm not saying he's better. I'm just saying, do you understand the individuality? For uh, today's needs in our class, we needed the Malbim. And do you see how every single time he comes through for you? But if you have another question, maybe the Malbim's not your guy. So we're going to argue on Facebook about the shot in our verse. And the question of the person on Facebook wanted to say Yavin. And the other guy wants to say, Rashi knows, Rashi knows, Rashi knows. And some guy who's called an idiot says, I think the Malbim knows. Everyone says, no way, Rashi's way better than the Malbim. Do you all see how dumb Torah conversations are like this? A waste of time? Waste of time. We don't poskin like the Malbim. Can you imagine that being said too? The law is not like the Malbim. Nobody ever follows the Malbim. Okay. I'm, I'm just making that up. That's not true. The point is people say it. But they'll say anything. Yavin Das. Ki yiru lo laymor. Ki yiru lo laymor. You can either translate it as it will be shown to him to say or he will see to say. What do you think? Pretty good, isn't it? Giyiru <laughs> lo, laymore. It will appear to him to say. It will be shown to him to say. He will see to say. What do you think, guys? Now that's Yavin Das, which means it'll appear, it'll, it'll, uh, Lenavon Yavin Das. What, uh, so Yavin is intelligent, and intelligence is revealed. Revealed intelligence. That's my definition. Okay? So now, Brian, I want you to read our verse again. I want you to translate uh, the last part according to David Katz. Revealed intelligence along those lines. Go ahead. All right. Beat a scorner, and a simple man will gain cunning. Reprove a man of understanding and he will reveal intelligence or no don't say he will just say revealed intelligence okay like colon a, a, a man of understanding colon revealed intelligence okay okay read it again beat a, everyone listen beat a scorner and a simple man will gain cunning reprove a man of understanding revealed intelligence. What do you think, guys? You got this? You see it? You understand why we use the colon? 
He doesn't need extra thick menu words. One or two. Somebody who has the ability to understand. <clears throat> He's a, is a navone. The word is navone in the verse. If you got a navone and you whap him up the head, all he knows is revealed intelligence. You understand? You don't have to prime him. He know, he's going he's going to understand. But it's a revealed intelligence. Intelligence revealed. It, it's 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 beyond. He's there. Exactly. 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 And you know what? He might get it wrong. But when you hit him, he gets it. Okay. Um next verse. Hit me. Keep me in Mishlei. Let's do all the Mishlei. Let's go. Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Brian. Go ahead. Wait, that's not right. Was it right? It can't be right. No, 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 no. That's Hoshea, I think. Four fifteen was Hoshea, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, 1415. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. Fourteen, fifteen. The one with an impure heart shall have his fill from his ways, and above him is a good man. That's a horrible translation. <laughs> that is so bad. I quit, guys. Goodbye. Have a nice life. That is horrible. That is really, really horrible. <sighs> Man. Wait, what were you reading from? Brian, what was that? What did you read from? All right, everybody make a note of this. You see what just happened here? Take a note of this. First of all, the first word in Hebrew is petty. Did you notice how the last verse we just read it had to deal with the petty as well, okay? Therefore, they're not using consistent words and translations. It is by any means not consistent. Petty yamin la kuldavar. The petty is, we'll call it the innocent, the simple guy. Yamin la kuldavar. He'll believe anything. He'll, he'll have faith in anything. The Petty will read Chabad.org and say it's Torah Divrei Elohim Chaim. I think I read the wrong verse. Oh, you did? 14, 15? Yeah. Wait. Petty. Yeah. Yeah, Petty. A fool believes everything. Uh, <laughs> all right. I just said they got it pretty bad. If that's what it was, man. All right. A fool believes everything, but a cunning man understands his steps. Okay, now I take back my, my complaints on Chabad.org. I take it back. Not completely, but most of the way. <laughs> um, again, what did you say? We'll understand? Is that how you said it? We'll understand? understands okay okay now rashi's going to talk over here wait a minute is that right wait a second no 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 wait yeah 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 hold on here's rashi what's he saying here okay rashi's interesting let's maybe check out rashi we have any other friends going on uh, who's the raw bug? What's he doing? No, <sighs> Evan Ezra is going to talk. And of course, our friend the mall beam is going to talk. We got action. All right, let's go. Let's check out the Evan Ezra. The room, Yavin. The room is the guy. I'll tell you who the Arum is. You guys want to know who the Arum is? I'm going to hang out with Travis, and Travis has a job 
And I really, uh, from after knowing Travis for the time I've known him, I, Travis, I don't understand the work you do. Okay. I don't have your wisdom, but if I hang out with Travis, I can probably figure some stuff out just by hanging around Travis one or two, but I'm not an expert. Okay. I, I might know my stuff, but I, I just don't know it like Travis, but I, but I can, I am, God has empowered me in that if I pay attention to Travis on the job, I can have a conversation with him. Maybe even an intelligent one, one or two. That's called a room. Cunning. Okay, I see that Travis holds his hands a certain way with the materials he works with. Okay, I just happen to notice. I'm not gifted. I'm not particularly smart either. It's just I, I, I have a sense for paying attention and figuring out what he's doing. I'm not an idiot. You understand? I'm not an idiot. And I just kind of, I get it, you know, we're, we're, I, I, I'm on the, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing and paying attention. I, I, yeah, fog. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. Fog just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't really, I mean, I, I, I obliterate it. Fog, you know, just the fog was just in terms of the handshake, you know, I think so. Perceptive. That's a, that's a safe bet. That's a safe word. I like, I like that. I like that. You know, Travis, I really like how you uh, how you get how you get around from point A to point B. You must be pretty efficient at what you do. Yeah, how'd you notice? Well, I was I uh, I don't know. I just noticed you. You really you you're industrious. You move quickly. Yeah, perceptive. Let's go. Let's go to room. Bavura shuro varuilo v'atan darko shelo yaser mimenu alkin acharav chacham yira. Wait a second. Bavura shuro varuilo. One second. What is he saying here? 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 Okay. How many of you have ever heard of Jimi Hendrix? How many of you are aware of the fact that Jimi Hendrix claimed to have not been able to read music? Jimi Hendrix could not read music. Now, I am a music master in this analogy, one or two. I am God's gift to wisdom and music, okay? And I watched Jimi Hendrix play music. You understand this? Now, what happened was in the story, me and Jimi Hendrix went to a place where there were natural harmonics. Didn't that happen? And Jimi Hendrix started getting into the groove. He started playing. He started saying, yeah, the, 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 the reverberation in this place uh, makes the energy feel, and I, I I get into the energy, and I know how to play this trippy song. And I looked at him, and I said, "Wow, you invented five new notes, and you used the uh, the Henderson maneuver to uh, to do blah blah blah." And I wrote a book about the theory of music. Didn't that happen? So who's the wise man? Me or Jimi Hendrix? Me. I am a chacham. What is Jimi Hendrix? He was our room. He just does it. He just does it. Okay? So Jimi Hendrix learned by Yavin. You understand that? He was Yavin. He will come to understand. The Arum. He will come to understand. Me, I am the wise man. I will see it. Because Jimi Hendrix made the revelation. He's the Navone, not me. If I was the Navone, I would be Jimi Hendrix. Now, we're saying he's in our room here. Why, why did I say he's in our room and, and Navone? Two different kinds of wise men. He's Navone. He understands the matter in the matter because he can understand that when trees sway in the wind, that's a song playing, one or two. 
But at the same time, when it comes to practice on a physical guitar, he has no idea what he's doing. He has no idea what he's doing. He figured out if you do it like this and like that, it makes a great hit song. Didn't he figure that out? So he's both in a vone and a room. I'm neither. I'm a wise man. Okay? I only know what I see. I don't see trees swing as music. Okay? I don't figure things out. I see him playing. I watch it, and I'm able to read. I read. I am uh, literate. Correct? And I only hang out with musicians that I can read. I'm educated. Okay. So you understand now, Jimi Hendrix was Yavin. He was Yavin because he's a Navon. Now, don't say Yav Navon and Arum are always the same, because they're not. Jimi Hendrix, in this particular case, happens to be both. A natural talent who puts his talent into practice. You understand the difference? Not every natural talent puts it into practice. A lot of guys can make a song out of the trees, but not all of them become a famous uh, guitar player. You understand that? Okay. Um, uh, that was the Ezra. Um, Malbeam, where's he at? Where's he at? Acher Shadavar, Mina Xil, Mina Aivel. Shaheem Asim Ibn Nufam, Enam Bedoki, okay, 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 but I'm time. Who I mean, a good ah, who I mean, Mamma Bedoki, who I mean, who's my mean, the petty, the idiot, is my mean, the Kodavar. Bain the Divak seal, Bain the Divak veal, the gleam, the only will of our room. Kuhefecha petty, the Yesh Palibo Arma live Khon Kodavar. Ulo Yapusa Rak Yavin Mashamoil Ashuro. Jimi Hendrix is a natural talent. Would Jimi Hendrix like to go to a board meeting? In a, in a bank to learn how to play guitar? The answer is no. Because the Arum is looking to get his craft better. I hang out where I'm inspired, right? I'm Jimi Hendrix, and I go where I'm inspired. I go to parties. I go in the woods, right? I want creativity. I want tie-dyes and afros, one or two. So when I do this, I'm looking, I'm looking to, to hop, right? I'm looking to, to get it. I'm, I'm looking for the, for the unique perspective. That's Yavin. It's, it's, it's sensitivity and, and putting yourself in position of the sensitivity. All right? When I study Jimi Hendrix, I am not sensitive. I am quite rigid. I, in fact, I am his worst enemy because I will sign him to a record contract and make him do that same maneuver 10 times out of 10, and I'll fire him if he gets it wrong, one or two. And then I'll blame him and say, you did it this way last time. I want you to do it that way every time. Next verse, please. The end of Rashi. Yeah, no, I was going to think about it, but what is he saying there? Do, do you have that translated by Chabad.org? Go ahead. Just wanted to read the last part. But yeah. a cunning man understands his steps. Exactly. Keep going. It says, Lashiru, his steps. He waits to quarrel unless or until he knows the matter correctly. Yeah, I'm, wait. So he waits to quarrel. Wait, wait, wait. This is what bothered me, this word psiusav. That's why I skipped it out. What, where does he get that word psiusav? Arum yavin psiusav. Klomar yitzapé melariv. He scouts or looks out to fight, and he waits until 
It's known to him, El Nachon. Jimi Hendrix chills in the forest, watching the trees sway with a guitar, and he and he just plays around. He's just having a good time. It's nothing serious. Nothing is serious until he gets it right. When he gets it right, exactly. When he hits the groove, he's got it. He was Yavin. You understand? He's like a a, a wolf. Way, uh, what do you call it? Like 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 like, like, like um, a predatory wolf, right? It doesn't have to be uh, an antagonistic way. He's just he 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 is so not daunted by the fog, is he, Travis? He says, "I eat fog for breakfast." For breakfast. Jimi Hendrix knows when he's in a cool place, he is going to get a song. And you all know people like this, right? I can, get, I can write a poem anywhere where I hang out. I can get a, a grappling move if you just give me time to figure it out, right? I can build a Lego museum, whatever model, blah, 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 right? Just shut up, leave me alone, and let me do my thing, and let me get it. Don't bother me. Exactly. That's Yavin. Isn't this great? Look at the tragedy if we would have left out Yavin. Is this not a crime against humanity? Seriously. Seriously. Next verse, please. Twenty-nine seventy. Brian, go ahead. 29.7. 29.7. A righteous man knows the judgment of the poor. A wicked man does not put his mind to knowing it. You did. Uh, say it again. You broke up. A righteous man knows the judgment of the poor. A wicked right. man does not put his mind to knowing it. <laughs> Ms. Boynen. That's the Aramaic. Let's see here. We got Matsuas David. And we have our friend of Malvin. Matsuas David. Lo yavin, lo yiten leiv lehavin uladas mechsurim. He does not pay attention. Lehavin, raise your hand if you understand the word lehavin. Hurry up, one or two. Lehavin, to to split hairs, to break it down. He does not care or pay attention to break it down, and to know mechsurim. And to know what's what's missing. All right, the guy says, you know what I said? He says, I don't care, get lost. Lo Yavin. This is the opposite of Yavin. You understand? So Yavin is, hey, I care to break it down and to fill in the blanks. I care to get rid of the fog. You know what? Travis, you're kind of interesting. I, I, I'm going to take away the fog between me and you. I don't even acknowledge there's fog. There's no fog. How you doing, Travis? So do you, you, you all see the personality of the Avin? He's a pretty cool guy, isn't he? He's a cool guy. Um, Malpin. Gam Devar Mavoyer Shize Nikridas. Shua Mishpa Mavoyer, Shua Mishpa Mavoyer Lo Yavinoto. A clear matter, he does not. Gam Devar Hamavoyer. Something that is clear is called Das. Okay? No fog. I, I bought milk and eggs yesterday. Did you guys know that? Yes, Rabbi Katz, we knew that. 
Is that clear to you? Yes, Rabbi Katz, that is clear. All right, I bought milk and eggs yesterday, one or two. That's called DOS. You guys have DOS now? You know what I did yesterday? One or two? You know what I did yesterday? Good. Shehu HaMishpat HaMavoyer. Um, uh, I bought milk and eggs yesterday because I was hungry, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys know all about me, correct? Very clear. That's all I ever did in my life. One or two? Okay. You now are Yavin me. You understand? You are Yavin me. If you don't know that I bought milk and eggs because I was hungry, you did not Yavin. So Travis and I are going to go on a lunch date, and he's watching the football game. And I'm saying, yeah, man, yesterday was, I was really hungry. I, I bought milk and eggs because um, I was starving. And then Travis says, um, blah, blah. Hey, do you even like milk? Is Travis a Yavin? No, he doesn't even care about me. I just told him very clearly that I like milk. As Shannon would say, he's not perceptive. Why are you not knowing that I like milk, Travis? I just got done telling you I like milk. You are not interested. You don't care about me. You don't want to be here. You are not Yavin. But if he's watching the game and we're chilling and I'm testing him, is this guy even listening to me? And he says... Yeah, I don't. I'm. I also sometimes, man. I buy milk when I'm just bored. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying. It just. It's a fun conversation. It tells me, wow, he he's watching the game or chilling, and and he listens to what I said. He doesn't owe me a favor. He didn't have to tell me his stuff about his milk preferences. So he told me in his way. He's Yavin. I hopped it. I'm Yavin. We're friends. He just listened. What's so hard about that? Why do you have to talk about the thick menu? Why do you have to bore me? Why can't we just get along? Why does it have to be Yavin? Yavin, 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 Yavin. Okay. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Isaiah, we're done with Mishle? Is that a fact? We're done with Mishle. Is that a fact? Okay. Isaiah 6.10. Let's go. All right. Where are we at? Isaiah 6.10. Brian, go ahead. This people's heart is becoming fat, and his ears are becoming heavy. His eyes are becoming sealed, lest he should see with his eyes and hear with his ears, and his heart understand, and he repent and be healed. Do I really need to explain this to you? Do you guys really think I need to explain this? <laughs> How awesome is that? Seriously. I know, it's incredible. Every day people read the prophet Isaiah and they, and they, 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 do you understand the depth of learning now? Why you have no idea what the prophet is saying? Tell this to all the Christian groups on Facebook. You have no idea what you're talking about. Until you dig in. Am I wrong? What was I again? 10. Uh, we got the Radak. And actually, the Malbim's not getting into it this time. He brings the whole verse, just one, bam, just the EHU the whole way. He's really not breaking it down. 
which is good. So I, I want to just follow the Radak. Let's go. Ulavavo, Yishma, your heart hears. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. But Oznav Yishma, Ulavavo Yavin. Okay. Your ears hear and your heart understands. Kamo. Lavavo Yavin, Kamo Ubelavavo. He says it's like in your heart, right? Ulavavo Yavin, his heart understands. It's like and in his heart. If Travis and I are talking about my milk and egg experience and he heard me, is it safe to say his heart was in it? When Jimi Hendrix is playing in the forest with his guitar, is it safe to say his heart was in it? Okay, can we say Yavin is, dude, just put your heart in it. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Next, next verse, please. Hosea 414. By the way, don't think that I'm not paying attention to the Aramaic. And I'm seeing each time the Aramaic is different. What does that tell me? That is the absolute word that includes all understanding. You can quote me on that. And that is probably one of the top 10 biggest kedushim I'll ever say in my entire life. You understand that? Yavin is such a little teeny little dinky word, right? It is the word that contains all forms of meditation and understanding. Do you understand that? 414. Brian, go. I will not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery, for they themselves join with harlots and they sacrifice with the prostitutes. Therefore, the people that does not understand shall be knocked about. The people that doesn't understand. Wow, what's he talking about? Rashi's got us. And so does David. Radak. That's it. Okay. Rashi. Achre she'enchem notnin leiv lahavin. None of you guys care to break this down. That's why you are a harlot, right? Harlotry me. A harlot now. We gotta, Haven't you always wanted to know what Hosea meant? Raise your hand. How don't you always want to know what is the, what the, his deal with the harlots? What is his fascination about harlotry? Seriously. Now we know. When you see the biblical harlot, it that's the, the biblical... Yeah, exactly. That, that's it. 100%. You just don't want to break it down. You are so obtuse. You just... You don't... You don't you're that. So that's what it means, Lo Yavin. You are that. You know, you're not Lashin Toreach, a derech, he says. You're not, you're not gonna be on the path of understanding. I'm in driving school. And Sammy, the driving instructor, is there. One or two. Hurry up. Driving school with Sammy. There's two paths, Morpheus says to Neo. You're getting your license or you're going to lose your license. Correct? I don't even care. I, I, I'm going to just get my license somehow. Sammy says, well, did you ever think you have to pass the test, David Katz? I don't even know what you're talking about. 
I'm entitled. I'm David Katz. I'm a citizen. I don't speak Hebrew. Okay, leave me alone and let me zone out. I'm a harlot. One or two. And then I get in the mail that I lost. I failed my test. And I'm going to complain. Israelis suck. Israel's horrible. It's a bunch of seculars, right? They don't even know what they're doing. That's a harlot. It sounds like a harlot, doesn't it? Just sounds like harlotry. Now we understand what harlotry is. I don't care. There's a nasty, shallow, superficial approach. Fog is okay. I'm okay with fog. Well, you're not going to get your driver's license. Okay. It doesn't even phase me. In fact, it's the mirror image of Yavin. Travis is so into the milk and eggs, he's like, whatever, I totally hear you. I'm with you. You see how there's a fine line? One guy chills and is like, whatever, I'm with you. The other guy is like, whatever, I'm with you, but I don't care about you. I mean, it's a very fine line between Yavin and Lil Yavin. Very fine line. 100%. 100%. Look, you know, the difference is, I'll tell you what it is. Travis and I are hanging out, having uh, the discussion at the restaurant, right? And I'm going to really, really dramatize this. Travis comes from somewhere different than me. So does Travis use slang words different than me? By definition, yes. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, you know, it's really hard to buy bread and spot. And Travis says, yeah, whatever. And I was saying, what do you mean, yeah, whatever? Yeah, whatever, like, you understand? Or yeah, whatever, like, get lost, I hate you. Then he says, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, you know, and where I come from, bread is like the hardest thing in the world to get. So now I say, whoo, man, he's not a bad guy. He's just, that's how he talks. You understand now? And notice how many times I'm using the word understand in my little analogy here. Those are words of understanding. I have to look for signs. What does he mean when he says whatever? Is that not the most female thing you've ever heard a guy say? That you have to look for the signs of what does he mean when he says whatever? That's what women do to men. Now you understand why. <laughs> because what, what do people mean when they say these little words? We don't know. You have to be able to split the hairs. Is this person saying that because he's with me? Or is he saying it because he just is just a bad guy? Then when you learn the language, you're 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 in the groove. You're being Yavin together. So you see how the opposite of Yavin is low Yavin, right? Your heart's in it. Your heart's not in it. Your nefesh is in it. Your nefesh is not in it. I think pretty much all matters in this world can go down that, that way. You know, are you, are, you know, are you with me or are you against me? It's that simple. And it's with everything is black and white because it is the nefesh. You're either helping my soul or you're not. It, it's as simple as that. Travis, you nailed it again. You're either healing my soul or you're taking my soul. Which one is it? That's Yavin. That's Yavin. Travis, you got it nailed 100%. When it comes to the nefesh and matter, understanding is of the nefesh. Are you, are you taking my soul? Or are, you, are you healing my soul? It is that simple. Uh, Pam, it oscillates depending, depending, depending on the grammar. It can be Yabin and Yavin depending on um, how it's used in the, in the sentence. So just go ahead and rely on Yavin just uh, for the sake of uh, consistent pronunciation. Next verse, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. no. We got the, who did I say? Rasul's David. Ratzalomer, Vahoyel, Vahayim, Asher, Lo Yavin. He's not saying anything. Uh, Radak, Yikashel, you'll, you'll stumble and fall. Come over, evil. They're not really given any insight here. They're focusing on other parts of the thing, but the stumbling and falling. 
uh, uh, basically, basically the if your heart's not in it, you're gonna you're gonna trip. That makes sense, right? If you're not paying attention, you're gonna fall down. It's that simple. It's that simple. If you don't watch where you're going, you're gonna stumble and fall. The lowest the kill Buraisa. This is interesting. Want to hear what the what the uh, air mag says? If you don't look in the Torah, you're sure to fall. So when we say your heart is in it, does that mean that you are a gear or a goy? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And yes, I am being discrimination here. It's that simple. Jimi Hendrix, in my little analogy here, just despite the fact of who he may what have been or wasn't, in my fictitious account, he okay, her, sorry about that. Um, for sake of argument, Jimi Hendrix in my world, okay, is playing guitar and he gets it. Is he a gear? When Jimi Hendrix is in the woods and saying, I'm going to make a song that's going to rip off a bunch of people and make a ton of money, and we're going to laugh our way to the bank. Is that a gear? No. So the basic line is, that, and, we, and Brian, I think we said this in the past. If I remember correctly, there was one class about a couple months ago, we said this very clearly, that gear's heart is in it. Remember that? We got it from the Malbim on Le Havin. Remember? Oh, there it is. You remember that? You remember that? I said, right. in fact, we, we quoted that expression. Go on Facebook and say a gear is defined by putting your heart in the gear. Do you remember that conversation? <laughs> That's it. We've come full circle, gang. A gear is a gear by putting his heart in the things. What is a gear? Someone whose heart is in it. How many of you guys saw my talk in the teeth on, on the night that I introduced myself? We had John the Gear and Dirk the Goy, correct? One or two. Now, as I described that night, was John a Gear? Why? Because his heart was in it. He said, come on back and let me give you a religious experience. One or two. Dirk the Goy, never, he never, he never do, he really didn't do anything for me. Not that he needs to do anything for me. He didn't do anything for himself. He didn't do anything for himself. I, honor, I don't even know his name. I had to rename him. John told me his name. I knew John's name. So you see the kid, but look, was it derogatory? The fact is he was 18 years old, give or take, okay, it was like a college job. I'm making this up, but the point is, he was a young guy. It was not a career move. His heart wasn't in it, and it shouldn't have been. And I said every single time, if he's playing Dungeons and Dragons off of work and his heart is in it, is he a gear when he's playing Dungeons and Dragons, so to speak? Yeah. I just didn't meet him in his gear clothes. I met John in his gear clothes. Right when John goes out with his friends, he talks about. Religious experiences of music. His heart's in it. Maybe his heart's in a lot of things. Maybe the question is, how gear are you? Maybe the question isn't, do you get gear? Maybe the question is, how gear are you? How gear are you willing to go? How many gear things do you got going on? Next verse. Tehillim 92.7. Hold on. My BTUs are pretty hot. It's middle of winter. I'm on 16 degrees Celsius. All right, let's go. And go ahead. A boorish man does not know neither does a fool understand this (laughs) 
So I, I I know what King David's saying. He's saying that this is the is the thing. When he says this, he means this. You understand what David what King David's saying? Can you imagine you are out to lunch with King David? And he says to you, Do you realize the service in this restaurant is substandard? One or two. David just said that to you. You're out to lunch with King David, and he says, Do you realize the service in this restaurant is substandard? One or two. What the, the seal is a fool. The seal doesn't understand this. Will the fool understand what David's talking about? He will have no idea. And David knows it. He will know it. Now, you are a Levine, or you are a Yavin with David. And David looks at you and says, Hey, Travis, the, 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 the service in this restaurant is substandard. You're going to know to go deep into the heart with King David if he says that, aren't you? There's something going on if he's telling you that. Right? I mean, this isn't this what Hollywood's all about? You know, two detectives walk into a bar and one says to the other guy, hey, we're on a we're on a sting here and look at old Bob over there in the corner. There's something going on with Bob. Like, yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood never has a guy going, what do you mean? I don't think so. What do you mean? <laughs> Let's see here. Number seven. I think now we understand who King David is. How do you feel about that? I think that I understand a little better now who King David is. How about you guys? <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. I'll tell you that. That says it all to me, really. Um, Malbim on King David here. Hold on. Yes, Abdel Ben Bear Ben Seal. I done behind you. What's up, the Amish love of you? See a little funny bug there, but. So an, an idiot, he says, knows a lot of stuff. You all know a good idiot? The idiot that knows a lot of things, whereas the, the ignorant, he's, he's an animal. He's just an animal. He's a good for nothing. And the idiot knows, he knows a lot, but he's an idiot. But the idiot... The idiot uh, is interested in his own stuff. Okay. I work, I went to MIT. Did you know that? I went to MIT and I'm an engineer. Okay. And I'm very smart. I got an 1800 on my SATs. Did you know that? Yeah. So I'm going to go out with Travis, and Travis is a smart guy. And he's going to say, Rabbi Katz, the, the, the service in this restaurant is very substandard. Didn't you say that to me, Travis? And you know what I'm going to say to Travis? I'm going to say, hey, Travis, do you think I can get the waitress's phone number? What do you think? See you, Brynn. And that, that's like the perfect thing to say to you, Travis, isn't it? You're telling me about like some deep insight, right? And I'm saying, Travis, what do you think I can get? What do you think the chances of me getting her phone number? Do you see the mismatch? It's a horrible mismatch, isn't it? Horrible, horrible, horrible mismatch. <laughs> so King David would say, this guy doesn't get this at all. So I, I, now, am I so dumb that I don't know what Travis is talking about? I know what he's talking about. I know what you're talking about, Travis. I really don't care either. I want to have this waitress's phone number. And then Malbim says, there's a difference between knowing and understanding. I know what you're talking about, but I don't care. Travis wants to hang out with somebody that, that cares. I need you to understand it and care about it, because that's where I'm at. 
And that's the truth. We're not here to pick up girls working in a restaurant. So he says the reason why Travis understood is because this is very interesting. Travis, you're going to like this. He, Travis, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. This is so good. Travis was willing to dumb himself down to get it. You see what happened? Travis went to the restaurant and he was willing to embrace the fog and say, what's going on here? I walked in and I said, I know exactly what's going on here. See the difference? Of course I know it's substandard service, Travis. Don't you see the dirt on the table? I know that. I know everything. I'm with MIT. Travis is saying, what's going on here? And I say, you're an idiot, Travis. Don't you see the dirt on the table? Travis, if you, know, if you were to even acknowledge me, you'd say, obviously, duh, that's obvious. That need not be stated. There is something deeper going on here. I am the guy at MIT and Travis, I know that this restaurant is substandard because I got tested on this at MIT, one of my tests. I know everything about it. I got a 94 in that test, by the way. Rock, you know, right to Lishtamish, Bimuse, Atvuna, Lavin, Gambis, Sichlo. But when I took that test at MIT, I never even thought of like going to a restaurant and talking about it. It's not something I talk about. I just think I know everything. But the really ignorant guy, he doesn't e even enter this conversation. So the Yavin is the one that entertains this entire Discussion from the vantage point of Travis. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying King David. That tells you who King David is. is I. That's an amazing verse. Ish bear lo lo Is that fantastic? Raise your hand if you feel like you know King David a little better now. <laughs> That's incredible stuff, man. That is incredible. Okay, next verse. Um, wait, we were just on to 94.7, were we? What was that? Wait, where were we, where were we just now? Wait, what? Again, where, where's the next verse? 94.7. Aha. Uh -huh. Brian, go ahead. They say, Yah will not see, nor will the God of Jacob understand. Wow. What does that mean? That's heavy. As soon as David, Eno noted lay with his boy name, but my saying, God doesn't pay attention to consider their actions. I run a substandard uh, restaurant. Did you know that? And you know what I think about God? I don't really care. I don't really care. Now, Travis is a radical evangel uh, evangelical, aren't you, Travis? Tra Travis. And you're going to say, God's going to, you're going to burn in hell and God is watching you, right? And I'm going to say, Travis, go back to your world. God doesn't care what I do. You're such a radical fundamentalist. God does not watch me in my restaurant. You're, you're paranoid and you're weird. Go back to Tennessee. 
because the the enlightened you know Kabbalah Torah perspective is generally not going to be the accusation that comes out, right? That's probably not a common um, uh, companion you're going to have with this person. So the Torah point of view is not going to come out. And all the more so, uh, I'm going to say God doesn't care that I put schmutz on my tables in my restaurants. That's what it means, lo yavin. Right? God doesn't care. Which means I don't really care about God. Now, if God cares, one sec. Brian, you want to do a little funny game here? Read verse six and seven together very slowly and pay attention. Go ahead. They slay the widow and the stranger. No, they don't. Read it right. They slay the widow and the stranger. No, they don't. Over the Hebrew. Okay. Almana <laughs> Veger. Okay. Read it right. So now read it right in, in context with the gear. Go ahead. This is profound. They slay the widow and the stranger. I don't think the gear. Read Say the gear. So the start over. Say the gear. Go. They slay the widow and the gear. Keep going. And they murder the orphans. They say, "Yah will not see, nor will the God of Jacob understand." How do you like that, guys? How do you like that? We will kill the gear. And God doesn't care. Like that? Do I really need to say any more? <laughs> look, look what King David's saying. Did he see reality? Did David care? Did King David care? <laughs> Man, this is incredible. The widow and the gear will kill him, and the orphans let him die and be murdered. And they'll say, God doesn't see it, nor does God of Jacob care. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, next verse. Job 36 29. 36 29. Wait a second, where'd I put Job? Job 36 29. Is this last one? Okay. Okay. Brian. Go. Or will one understand the spreading of a cloud, the darkness of his pavilion? I know this verse. This is a famous verse. Read it again. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize this. I don't know where I know this verse from. Go ahead. Again. Or will one understand the spreading of of a cloud, the darkness of his pavilion. Understand the spreading of a cloud. So does David, Ibn Ezra, Melvin, Rashi. Yeah. Oh, Im. Yavin Adama Yesh before she Av. Wow. If a man will understand what it means to, to uh, spread the cloud. How do you like that? How do you like that? 
Do you even care why God runs the world? Do you even care why the clouds come and go? That's what he's saying. How's that for sensitivity about God running the world? Avka Asher Yavin Yavin Hamakom Eis Bo Teva Precious Av Tachas Veshemayim. Did you ever stop to consider the places that nature happens as clouds spread under the heavens? What is God doing when the clouds spread? They say Job is, is you know, existential, existentialism. How's this for existentialism? so the Malim says it's wisdom. The Malim saying, if you can answer this question, number one, it's possible to know the answer to this question. And this verse is the answer to the question. Brian, read it again. This is the answer to the question. Re hear the answer to the question. Hear the question and its answer. Go ahead. Or will one understand the spreading of a cloud, the darkness of his sukkah? That's what it is. The spreading of a cloud is the darkness of his, uh, I don't want to say sukkah. Covering, um, shade, dwelling. If you understand that the what the ah the, oh, makes sense, makes sense. God is above this world, so the clouds spreading, right? Is like is the, it's the rakia. He's describing the rakia, the second day of creation. That God hides through these miraculous ways of nature. You know, just that's that's Jimmy. The, so you you know, you're looking at the birds chirping and 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 talking to yourself in the woods. Jimi Hendrix is looking at God dissipate the clouds. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what that's what when Jimi Hendrix is making a song, that's what he's doing, and he's not going to be able to articulate it. It's just going to come out as like a, a song. What else can he do other than make a song? I mean, who are you going to tell? There's no words. Words of understanding, as I've been telling you, it's not about a PA. There's no words. You either get it or you don't. God reveals it or you didn't. You, did. you don't talk about it. You, you play it in a song. You draw a picture. You pray to God. You smile. You, you shake your head and say, uh-huh. Next verse. Ah, uh, Daniels, I forgot, yeah. Oop. <laughs> Where are we at here? Eleven thirty-seven. I was supposed to take it easy tonight. You guys didn't let that happen. Eleven thirty-seven. Uh, 
and he will not contemplate the gods of his fathers and the most desirable of women and any god he will not contemplate for he will magnify himself over all so basically the harlot is the low yavin the people that reject god in the torah don't understand how do you like that? What's a gear? A gear is someone. Don't don't tell me a gear believes in God. That's false. Don't tell me a gear re, re, uh, rejects idolatry. That's false. A gear understands Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yisrael. God is 1A. 1B is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And that can only come from the heart. If you connect to God in the heart, you come to that conclusion 10 times out of 10. Lo Yavin, you don't get God. I, basically, I get gear. It's called I get God. That's gear. I get gear. I get God. Lo yisboinin lechaved shum eloha. Right, lo yavin is you don't honor God. Af eloha amiti, af es eloha amiti, amiti kaomer im. Who's this? Who's this guy? Eloha amiti. Kaomer im al eloha amiti. Lo yavin echim kein yavin al milus amo Yisrael. Right, so if you don't get the true God, you don't get what's going on in reality. You don't get Israel. You don't get Torah. You really have nothing to say. Nothing. If you don't Yavin, you're not you're not here. You're not playing the game. If you're Yavin, you're here. Solomon says, "Know who you're sitting across from." That's what King David said too. You don't get it. As the King David said, if you're not getting it, you're not getting it. Shavasav hayu oivdim le tzadek v'noiga. Le tzadek v'noiga. Al kina lo lo yavin shalo yavdu rak le siva rishonim. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's all the verses. You know what? Let's just go ahead and wrap it up. Let's put it all together. Ready? Go back to Mishle. To know wisdom in Musr. Lahavin Imre Bina. And Pam Rogers was supposed to tell me to go back to the Malton. Let's do it. Lavini La Rabina. Lavini <laughs> La Rabina. You ready? Shiavin. This is the big moment here, guys. Shiavin. Does everybody know what Yavin means? It's called put your heart in it. That he. I'm going to translate it that way. That he puts his heart in it. In what? Um, uh, Amrim Hastumim, hidden words of Hab Havina, hidden words of Bina. And we got. I'm going to think about what Bina means in a second. La Lahavin Dvar Metoch Dvar, and I'm going to tell you a little secret in Hebrew. When it says Avbina, then the word Ula Havin, Devar, Matok, Devar. However many of you guys speak Hebrew on whatever level, do you know that the, the letter Vav means and? Have you ever heard about that? Vav means and? Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Vav also alternatively can mean or, O, or. 
And I'm going to tell you another little secret. Based on what I read here, it means, in other words, when your heart's in it, towards hidden words of Bina, in other words, to split it, split it down, break it down, put your heart in the matter in the matter. You've now finished the second verse of Mishlei. And next week, we're going to read the Dilna Gon's commentary. Mazel tov to you all. That's it. To know wisdom and instruction. To basically circumcise your heart so that you can get to the deeper hidden matters of this world. That's David Katz's translation. Adaptation. Bina is, is, is the deeper matter. It's hidden. The hidden deeper matter. You're not getting there until your heart's in it. And, the, and your heart in it is defined by did you get God? And you can get God. If you try to tell me you can't get God, that means you didn't get God. If you told me you get God and, and you did, then you did. Don't tell me this whole thing, we can't get God. Yes, you can. God gave the Torah in order that you should be able to get God. That's the covenant. So once you get through people telling you you can't, that's right, it's a choice. And you choose to get God. That's what gear means. That's my interpretation of it. I get gear as I get God. When you get God, you get the secret matters of this world. So we, so basically, you, the Proverbs is the reality that we live in from a, a certain point of view, of a godly point of view, in order to know wisdom and instruction, to basically soften your heart to penetrate the hidden matters of this world. And in the end, if you... Fix your heart. There's nothing you can't get to. And that means you have to you have to get God. The more you get God authentically and stick to God authentically, which has nothing to do with rejecting idolatry. You realize that's ridiculous. This is a whole different level. This is called get God. King David style, get God. When you're after, what we say about David, what we say, what we say about King David, a man after the heart of God, right? A man after God's heart. By definition, then, did David get the hidden matters? Is to him the hidden matters? So then, what is the hidden or deeper impression of Solomon's proverbs? He's explaining to you his father. Period. Solomon came to tell you about his father. You want me to prove it? Raise your hand if you want me to prove it. 